My most rewarding experiences have included uh, playing with Bernstein during my LSO period and then uh, playing for Rudolf Kempe for two years in the Royal Philharmonic and after that for six years with Carrion in a Berlin Phil. And these were all remarkable years for me. I always enjoyed playing in orchestras. In fact, uh, I got such a kick out of the Berlin Philharmonic. If they'd known how much I enjoyed it, they wouldn't have paid me. <laughs> it was, I mean, it was a really terrific orchestra. I wanted to do my own thing. I wanted to play the Bach sonatas, all of them, in a concert in several concerts, so to speak. <laughs> I mean, I just wanted to go on tour and do my thing, and that's what I did eventually. My sound is actually unique and now there are a lot of young flute players coming up who are very, very good. I mean, outstanding. And they're the ones who say to me, Jimmy, when I was 12, I got a record of you and I listened to it every day, just every day, every day, every day, because I wanted to get that sound. So my unfulfilled ambition is to transmit how to do this and show the exercises which will make you proficient. And this involves a whole bunch of things that people don't think about. For example, the fingering, going from one note to the next. Don't interrupt the second note by lifting the fingers too quick or putting them down too hard because you take away that precious moment between the two notes, which is where the magic is. I would like to leave behind a number of committed flute players that is committed to really playing music and not just doing a dexterous reading of the score, but people who are really committed to playing, who show us their soul. As a legacy to my teaching, I would like to think that I've shown some people the way to play a phrase from within, to give a good line to it and to devote themselves to really making music on another level.
my most Irish trait is my undying love for the people, for the heritage, for the art, for the writers, and the land.